So when I look back in 65 years of ministry, you know, it's, it's been a, quite a journey. It's quite a journey that at my age, at 91, I'm still doing a lot of activity. Oh, there's one other thing I want to talk to you about, too. Back during the charismatic renewal, do you remember that, Pastor Brian? Okay, I got caught up in that. And it was great. It was really great. And uh, myself and I had a lot of lay people who we trained as prayer partners, and we ran a prayer house over in Armour Road, the edge of Peterborough. And uh, we were open there from morning to late afternoon, and people came just for prayers. So we had the prayer partners there that prayed with people, and I acted as counselors, and we had it for several years. And uh, when I talked to some of the psychologists and psychiatrists at Civic Hospital, they knew a lot of their patients were coming to the prayer house for prayers, that they wanted the spirituality as well as the skills of the psychiatrists and psychologists. People were hungry for the spirit as well, and how the prayer house. And after a while, I realized that I needed to be more, be better trained in counseling. And I met I met the motorcycle lady here before the service. Where is she? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, right. Well, I went out one day with an OPP officer who's with the Golden Helmets and said, "Teach me to ride a motorcycle." So he taught me how to ride a motorcycle. And now I had to make a choice. Do I buy a motorcycle or do I go back to university? <laughs> well, I did the painful thing. I went back to university and got my degree in pastoral counseling. But I also knew there was something missing. And so there's a clinic in Philadelphia. And I went down to the clinic in Philadelphia and they were a spirit, very, they were both psychologists and therapists. All they did was therapy. And, uh, but it was a spirit one, spirit-led one. And in their sessions with a client, the psychologist would be doing his thing with his skills and strategies, but also had a co-therapist, and the co-therapist would sit there and pray, and the spirit, the word of knowledge, and then the person who had the word of knowledge would whisper to the psychologist, and it would short circuit by months, probing, thinking, because a client comes and presents with a present presenting problem, but not the depth, deep problem. But the spirit, the word of knowledge, would give that to the, the prayer person. They would share it with the psychologist, and the healings which take place are phenomenal because of working together. And the other thing they taught me was how to use faith, how to use, use faith imagery in healing. I really got deeply involved in the healing ministry. And it wasn't that I healed very many people physically, or God through me, but the one thing which it seemed to work well for me because I was so intuitive, was the healing of inner healing, the healing of memories, the healing of trauma, uh, the healing of life hurts. And that is something that came a specialty in a sense. And so for many years, I had, I practiced, uh, had the practice of counseling. And uh, so many people came saying, we want the spirituality as well as and so being able to, I never had any person, not once, whether they were a, a Christian or whatever the religion they might be, or an atheist, I never had one person say, I don't want to be helped. If Jesus can help me, I'm all for it. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how pain and fear makes you very open and receptive. And so... But the healings I saw taking place of people who've been dragging trauma and, and inner healing and painful memories for many, many years. And that's probably the most 
gratifying time of my ministry was the years when I acted as a counselor. But it was done when I combined the gifts of the Spirit, especially the word of knowledge, with the skills and strategies I learned in psychology, combining the two of them together. For me, I really saw the hand, in the hand of God, the work of God. I really saw how much God loved people particularly people who were hurting, who were living with pain, trauma, and painful memories. You know, it was the most humbling time in my life, the years that we did this, that I did that. And so I really can't forget that as well, of how the Spirit was so powerful in that ministry. And I think what we're doing now with Trish and others, one of the things we're trying to bring to the homeless is the spirituality. Many people are bringing them food, clothing, all kinds of different things. It's been a great awakening in Peterborough. And even now, even though we haven't put any sleeping cabins up yet, there's been a great awakening taking place. And when Jesus said, you'll always have the poor with you, they have a purpose. In the plan of the universe, in the plan of God, somehow, in some great mysterious way, the marginalized, the poor, the hungry, the homeless, somehow they have a role to play in this whole thing of awakening, of drawing people into goodness, breaking people's fears, breaking away judgments. Because we hear so many judgments of the, of the homeless, the mar poor, the marginalized. People have all kinds of judgments against them. And once they come and meet some people, they realize we're brothers and sisters. We are. We're one. We are one. But it's by that experience. And that's why I think a big awakening has taken place in the city. And in this way, the, the, uh, the poor and the homeless are calling us. They are calling us. They're challenging us. And so many people are becoming awakened and aware and are responding. And I see it as a real miracle of grace, real miracle of grace of what is happening. And uh, so Trish and I and the people will continue to minister to the homeless. Because like I say, people are doing a great work. We're running into a lot of obstacles, but I don't want to talk about them tonight, but uh, you can read about them in the examiner. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I really am confident that we will someday get the sleeping cabins up and other people will do their part to provide sleep quarters for the homeless. And, uh, but what we're talking about here, too, is keeping the spirituality. That's the one thing. So there are those who are able are able to give food and clothing and, and friendship and relationships. But the one thing we can give is we can give God to people. And, you know, the one thing I find about the homeless, and I often kid some of my Catholics, a lot of Catholics is they couldn't say God or Jesus out loud if you paid them. I mean that literally. I do. But not the, not the homeless. They talk about God. They talk about Jesus. They talk about the fact that they believe in their hearts that God is with them, that Jesus loves them. They do. You know, and, and it's, it's phenomenal. And uh, in many ways, you know, they are people of faith, even though our, they have a lot of struggles and a lot of difficulties, and they're judged in many ways, yet somehow there's so much that's in their hearts that somewhere as perhaps as a young person, they may have gone to a church for a few years, or, or even if they haven't, just among themselves, I don't know. But they don't hesitate to talk about God and Jesus and how Jesus loves them and God is with them. That's what they tell me. And so what we want to do is grow 
and reinforce and strengthen and nourish and nurture their spirituality and add that dimension to what everybody else is doing for them to add that missing piece, the missing piece of helping them to continue to grow in their awareness of God's love for them. And uh, so that's what we're working at. And Trish here, with her good work that she's doing, and, uh, and other people, we're going to keep doing it. Anybody, any questions that want to fire at me? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, that goes on with what we've talked about. And, and Trish, as you know, a, a woman of great faith and others. And at Saint, the old St. Andrew's Church hasn't been used for, what, 20 years? And we, uh, Peggy Shaughnessy has rented parts of it. So we rent a room for her. And we have uh, started Sunday services there on Sunday morning. And when I put it in my Facebook page, I say it's for people who are homeless because they don't have a home, and people who are homeless because they don't have a home church. And all are welcome. And the song we sing every Sunday at the beginning is, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Hospitality, welcoming and a service, and, uh, and so we had, a, we had a good crowd this morning, good, good music, and that's why I, I really appreciate your musicians. They're great. They're great. And uh, fortunately, we have some good singers, too. So, so that's kind of what we're doing, and, and Trish and I are committed to it, as well as some others, and uh, we'll see what happens.